Sheikh Klawe, Inknash Muniksha Naku Sapsi Kwakla, Kushi Apotumki Anthony Craig, Washna Shiakamination Kanek, Kushna Shaikha Talelapa. Good evening. My name is Naku Sapsi Kwakla, and my English name is Anthony Craig. I'm from the Yakama Nation, and I live at the Tulalip tribes. When I was invited to do this, I tried my best to memorize just the way the other speakers had until my late father, who was a poet, came to me and said, use the written word. I'm gonna do this the way I was trained to do it. I'm proud to belong to the communities of Yakama Nation and Tulalip tribes. They continue to make me who I am. I introduce myself in my tribal language so my ancestors may hear me better and fill this room. Make space for them. I hope my late grandmother is joining us too, and I hope she brings my dad. I'm here to share about indigenous love, intellectual power, and leadership held in the systems of relationality and intergenerationality in our native communities. On the far left is my grandmother. Around the time she was sent to Indian boarding school, from her home, in a tanum on our reservation, she moved to Tacoma, Washington to St. George's Indian School. Just 30 miles or so from where I stand now, my grandma went to Indian boarding school. She didn't share much about her time at St. George's with us, but a century later, that experience still impacts each one of us. Tonight, I ask you to hold some hard truths with me. Right here in the place where we learn, study, and lead, occurred acts of genocide through formal Western schooling. The government, churches, and other institutions enacted federal policy around boarding schools meant to remove and destroy. Our young people were removed from their families and communities, their lands and waters, their languages and stories. This was also an attempt to remove them from themselves. That was my people's introduction to formal education, and many did not survive. Anyone who wants to acknowledge lands, talk about equity and justice through education, should know and reckon with these hard truths from history. At the same time, we must always acknowledge the futures we must create through these same education systems. So let's also hold the power that has always existed and will always exist in our tribal communities. But back to my grandma, Teresa. The middle photo, is a moment of intergenerationality. I used to listen to my grandmother whisper lovingly to my son. My son's now in his 20s. My grandma, my grandma would speak to him in our language. She, he was the only person I ever heard her speak our language to. This is learning in action. We have always had systems for teaching, learning, and leadership. And our grandmothers and grandfathers they protected those and kept them alive and well. My first formal role in schools was as a kindergarten teacher, and I loved my students. I love them today as the 30-year-olds I still run into in Tulalip. My kindergarten classroom was meant to be a space for intergenerational focus on love, learning, and collective healing. However, I let misaligned curriculum, dehumanizing standardized tests, an oppressive behavior program shaped my practice until a Tulalip elder intervened. Kai Kai, Bernie Gobin, offered me one of my most fundamental teachings from our people. Hoyarachat. Hoyarachat, he said. In the language of these Coast Salish territories, he said, Hoyarachat. This is a Lachutzit expression that means our way of life. Grandpa asked me, how do you want your classroom to be? You already know what to do. We already have ways of being. Hoyarachat, make it so. To this day, Hoyarachat is the heart of my work and my existence. Always center our life ways. In the far right photo is my grandson and me. He's in the front row. <laughs> He's now a kindergarten student in the very place where I once taught. My work is now focused on him and his generation. We must shape schooling and learning that maintains this level of joy through systems of relationality and intergenerationality. 
From the ashes of the boarding school system, we continue turning back to our lifeways. We have always had the lifeways we need. May I raise my grandson to know our ways of life. I pray my ancestors recognize me in what I'm doing. That's the visibility I most seek in my work. I hope anyone hearing these words reckons with the violent histories of this place, but does not stop there. Recognize the perpetual power in our tribal communities. We are building the futures that heal our ancestor spirits by centering indigenous love, intellectual power, and leadership for our young people and for all coming generations.